Hi, I'm Dave from Craig and I'm here with another tool tip to help you get the most from your Craig tools. You know, the rip cut will help anybody make smooth, accurate cuts in plywood and sheet goods. But we want to make sure that you get the most from your rip cut, so here are a few tips that will help you get great results. You know, the best advice I can give is to get the right kind of blade, and I'll show you what I mean. You know, most of the time circular saws come with a blade like this one. It has 24 teeth and it's designed for making fast, rough cuts in construction lumber, not for making smooth cuts in plywood and other sheet goods. So you want to get a blade that's meant to do the job. It may be labeled as a plywood blade or it may say for fine or ultra fine cuts, but the secret is tooth count. The more teeth, the smoother the cut. If you just have a few projects going, you can grab one of these. It's a steel toothed plywood blade and this one has 140 teeth so each one takes a real small bite and that gives you a smoother cut. But a blade like this will dull pretty quickly. If you've got a lot of projects in the hopper, upgrade to this, a 60 tooth carbide tip blade. Now again, with 60 teeth each one takes a small bite but those carbide tips are a lot sharper so you'll get a smoother cut and they'll stay sharp longer. And best of all, a blade like this one, even with the carbide tips, won't set you back much. Maybe 12 to 20 bucks. Alright, I went ahead and installed that 60 tooth carbide tip blade in the saw, so I'm going to get much smoother cuts. I'm almost ready to cut, but before doing that, let's talk a little bit about how a circular saw works, because if you understand, you'll get a better result. What you need to know is the way the blade cuts. On a circular saw, the blade rotates and cuts on the upstroke. So that means it's entering the bottom of your sheet and exiting at the top. So when you're laying down your sheet to cut it, make sure you put the good face or the side that's going to show most on your project so it's facing down. Have the bad face up. That way the blade enters on this side and you'll get a nice smooth cut. If you get any tear out, it's going to be on the top side where it really won't show on your project. You know, what I really love about the rip cut is it makes cutting big sheets like this easy. And I've got my sheet laid out, and of course I've got the good face down. And since the sheets are big and can be kind of awkward, you want to be sure it's well supported as you work, and that's where my next tip comes in. I like to support the sheet on a piece of this thick, rigid foam insulation. You can pick it up at any home center, and it's really handy. I mean, you can see there's a lot of saw cuts in this one already. You can use it over and over again. But what's great about the foam is as you cut, the whole sheet's supported. So the pieces aren't going to move, they won't bind, and they won't fall. So I'll get a better result and of course a much safer cut. So with my sheet laid out, I'm almost set, but I need to do a couple more setups on the saw. So to set up the saw, I need to do a couple of things. And the first is to set the depth of cut. Now you can drop the blade all the way down, that's what a lot of people tend to do, but that won't give you the best result. My next tip is to set the blade so it's just a little bit deeper than the thickness of the sheet that you're cutting. You don't have to be exact, just eighth quarter inch, but it'll give you more of a shearing cut and you'll get a nice smooth result. The next thing is that I've set the rip cut for the width of cut that I want. You just slide the saw to where you want it, in this case 10 inches. So I've got the indicator set at the 10 inch mark, I lock it down, so now I can plug in the saw, grab my safety glasses, and I'm ready to cut. Now for the best part, actually cutting. Before I start I always like to double check that my saw and my rip cut settings are where I want them, and I make sure that my workpiece has good solid support. With that done, I'm ready to cut. I'm just going to hold the saw in position so the blade is away from my sheet and then press the guide arm against the edge because that's how my rip cut guides the saw. Now I turn on the saw and I let it get to speed before I start cutting. I'm not going to be in a hurry because a blade with more teeth cuts more slowly, so I'm going to let the blade do its work. I'm pushing the saw forward with my dominant hand and steadying the guide arm with my other hand, making sure that I control the saw and the guide arm through the whole cut. Since my workpiece is well supported, I don't have to worry about it. Well, there you go. With the rip cut, an ordinary circular saw, and a few simple tips, you can get great results. And look at this piece. It's cut to the exact size that I need, the edge is nice and straight, and there's no tear out. 
So, I hope you found these tips helpful and we'll see you next time.